South Korea offers everything a tourist may want in a holiday. It has a rich and fascinating history, a lively culture, wonderful food, friendly people, and world-class tourism infrastructure. It is also a land of contrasts, with views ranging from ancient mountaintop Buddhist temples like Bulguksa to ultra-modern skyscrapers like Seoul's Lot World Tower. It also has one of the world's most unusual tourist sites, the DMZ, which is part of a military line between two nations that are still technically at war. Discover the best places to visit with our list of the 9 must-see places in South Korea. Starting with our number 9, Busan. Are you informed that you may go to the beach in Korea? Busan is the country's second biggest city, and its coastline is surrounded with gorgeous beaches and resorts. There are also a lot of culture and history to be found here. Be sure to stop at the Biomeosa Temple and Gamecheon's hillside town. Gamecheon, Korea's counterpart of Santorini, is a European-style community perched on cliffs above the sea. Jagalchi Market, the country's largest commercial fish market, is a must-see for seafood admirers. Consumers may enter a portion of the market, and there are several tiny restaurants that can prepare your purchase so you can eat it right there. Getting to Busan is simple. The KTX high-speed bullet train from Seoul takes little over two hours. Moving on with the number 8, North Seoul Tower. Undoubtedly, everyone who visits Seoul should go to the city's iconic observation tower. It's located roughly on top of a mountain, along with the tower's height, elevates you nearly 500 meters above sea level and the city below. However, set aside some time to explore the nearby mountain area. The tower lies at the summit of Mount Namsan, and the entire region is known as Namsan Park, which is managed by the city. There are kilometers of hiking paths to explore, all within a few minutes of downtown Seoul. The upper levels of the North Seoul Tower offer indoor and outdoor viewing decks, as well as eateries. The outside of the tower is covered in LED lights, which is lit each night in seasonal light shows. The city nearby, Myeongdon, has a cable car that brings you to the tower's base area. From here, you may hike. Take time to visit Namsung Hancock Village after climbing the mountain and riding the cable car. These restored historic towns are recreations of historical Korean districts that may be seen all across Seoul and Korea. Five hanoks, or traditional Korean houses, have been rebuilt in this community. Be amazed with the breathtaking views from number 7, Seoraksan National Park. Mountains, lakes, waterfalls, streams, and miles of hiking routes allow you to experience this spectacular natural paradise, which is like the Yosemite. The park's natural richness is well known, with over 1,500 distinct animal species and over 1,000 different plant types. Two Buddhist temples are also featured inside the park, one of which is renowned as the Temple of a Hundred Pools, because to the numerous ponds around it that are fed by mountain streams. When you've had your fill of wandering, Take the cable car up Siaraksan Mountain for some spectacular views of the mountains and valleys. The park is roughly a 4-hour bus ride or a 3-hour drive from Seoul. Discover the beauty of Korea's culture with our number 6, National Museum of Korea. Seoul, being a global city, has a multitude of museums. The National Museum of Korea is the largest, and like the Met in New York, it's a destination that can't be seen in a single visit. The huge collection mixes art, history, and archaeology to portray the tale of the Korean people and to depict the history of Korean culture. If you just have a short amount of time in Seoul, this is a wonderful destination to see. The collection is immense, spanning over a million years. It's fascinating, particularly for families and children, because there's such a diverse collection of items. From Stone Age artifacts to contemporary Korean art, there's something for everyone. Wow, we're halfway down the list already. If you'd like to see more of this content, please click that subscribe button down below. Moving to the majestic number 5, Gyeongbokgung Palace. The massive Gyeongbokgung Palace complex, often known as the Northern Palace, 
has seen a lot of instability throughout the years. It was initially constructed in 1395 during the Joseong Dynasty, which was responsible for the construction of five magnificent palaces around Seoul. The palace has been attacked, destroyed, and rebuilt multiple times, with the Japanese occupying it for the first time in 1592. It was only repaired in 1990. Gyeonghuru Pavilion and Hyangwangjong Pond, two of the remaining ancient Joseong buildings, are worth seeing. A guided walking tour of the palace compound is available. The National Palace Museum and the National Folk Museum, both recommended for visiting, are also located inside the grounds. If you're looking for a one-of-a-kind experience, check out our number 4, Bulguksa Temple. Bulguksa Temple, one of Korea's real Masi Buddhist temples, is often regarded as the country's most important. The government has designated it as historic and scenic site number 1. Seven of the country's national treasures, sacred pagodas, and Buddha statues may be found in the temple. The temple is located on the slopes of Mount Tongham in Gyeonju, Korea's ancient capital. Because of all the ancient structures and temples, it is referred to as a museum without walls. The new KTX high-speed train takes around two and a half hours to get from Seoul to Gyeonju. Our next one is a well-known destination, and I'm sure you're very familiar with our number three, Jeju Island. Jeju Island is a popular vacation location that is sometimes likened to as Korea's Hawaii. This volcanic island is best accessible through a one-hour domestic flight from Seoul. Beautiful beaches, as well as a rich culture and history, can be found on the island. Holasan, South Korea's tallest peak and a dormant volcano, is here, as are kilometers of enormous lava tunnels. Lava tubes are natural air pockets in solidified lava the size of railway tunnels that may be visited. Be sure of seeing the Hyenyos at Jungmun Beach, these are ladies that dive to the depths of hundreds of feet to catch a variety of seafood. This custom began generations ago, when all the village males were out on the water fishing. There are also hundreds of kilometers of hiking paths on the island, as well as several hot springs and health resorts. Having a hard time choosing between temples and parks? Why not try our number two, Jingwansa Temple? about 15 minutes from downtown Seoul. This ancient temple complex offers both a genuine Buddhist temple experience and a beautiful national park. The temple, which has been on the site since 1000 BC, offers a variety of programs for tourists to learn about Buddhism and the monastic lifestyle. The temple is a must-see also for food lovers, since they cultivate the majority of their very own food. The temple also produces its own Korean delicacies, such as kimchi pickled in ancient massive clay jars. Jingwansa provides public meals and longer overnight stays, as well as educational events that demonstrate the historic temple's long-term stability. You can participate in a temple stay program, which includes an overnight visit, or simply come for a meal, even if you are a vegetarian, or to view the temple structures and shrines. Because the temple is located inside of Bukhensan National Park, you can also visit the region merely to explore it. There are miles of hiking routes as well as three summits to climb. Along the hiking routes, there are remnants of an old fortification, in addition to the mountains and woods and their stunning beauty. And finally, our top spot. After all the heavenly sceneries from our previous spots, I'm sure your taste buds will be delighted from the sight of our number one, Seoul's street food markets. No trip to Korea is complete without tasting some of the country's exquisite street cuisine. The Guangjiang Market, situated in the center of Seoul, is every food lover's dream come true. Multiple food vendors line the enormous covered market area, offering the full range of Korean local cuisine. The nice thing about this market and other food markets in Seoul is that most of the booths are assembled like those little restaurants, with such a row of stools and a counter in which you can sit and eat. It's also great that almost all stands will give you a free sample so you can test out their products. Stalls often provide binte tok, which is like mung bean pancakes, bibimpap, a rice mixed with sautéed beef, vegetables, and gochujang red chili paste, 
the gimpap, which is a Korean sushi, sundae, also known as the Korean blood sausage, tteokboki, which is a stir-fried spicy rice cake, and other noodle varieties. I'm glad you made it to the end of our video. Have you been to any of these places from our list? Where's your favorite? The temples and palace? Or the parks? Let us know in the comments section below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please do hit that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you won't miss any of our next destinations. Thank you guys for tuning in, good luck with your journeys, and see you on the next one.